What's going on, America? This is Kevin in Kevin's Corner. Didn't I call it a couple days ago? I said it's a matter of time before they weaponize sexual assault. The Democrats just cannot fight fair, can they? They can't get to the president the, the, the proper way. They can't get to him a legitimate way. So they come up with these seedy, underhanded tactics to try to win and win the favor of the American citizens and the voters. Now, I'm watching Fox and they interrupted something saying that there was a press conference going on today with several of the women who accused President Trump of sexual assault during the campaign. And now all of a sudden, mysteriously, right before Roy Moore's election takes place, and also during this quote unquote, very receptive time, and in, in, in politics where all of a sudden all these politicians just grow this random moral compass, just all of a sudden now they're hypersensitive to sexual assault, not only around the world, but even with their own party, as you've seen the Democrats throw the two people that were accused of sexual assault under the bus because they're so sim they're so uh, sensitive to this topic and they're champions for women. That's why they did it, right? Wrong. You know why they did it? So that they could eventually push this narrative again and revisit the whole sexual assault thing with President Trump and connecting with Roy Moore and try to paint the whole Republican Party as a party that tolerates sexual assault. Now, here's how you know it's being politicized and that it's a game, ladies and gentlemen. When you think, you got to sometimes think like the enemy. Okay, um, you take, for example, Diablos, the devil. You know how he works, right? Well, the devil never shows you the end game. You see the results of it, but you don't see the plan to sabotage people way before the end game. Setting the groundwork, laying it all out so that at the end of it, you walk right into the trap. Okay, it's like chasing a rabbit. When you hunt, any of those that know how to hunt, you go with your dog and you say, okay, rabbit, I know you're out there, you wascally rabbit. Uh, and you say, go get him, boy. Dog chases the rabbit. The hunter stays right there because he knows that the rabbit have no idea that the trap's been set. The rabbit's focus on the dog. So he takes off running in a big figure eight and he's like, oh, I'm booking now. There's no way you're going to catch me, Fido. And as he's coming back around, guess who's standing here still waiting because he knows the rabbit runs in a figure eight. It's the, the hunter with the shotgun. And he just waits for the rabbit to come on back around as the dog's chasing him. And he hears the rabbit coming. Why? Because the dog is going, boo, boo, boo. And you hear him louder. All of a sudden, here comes the rabbit. Boom. You shoot the rabbit. Rabbit had no idea that he was being set up. He's going, you know what? I'm just looking at the dog chasing me right now. I don't, I'm not even focused on the hunter. Same thing with this whole sexual allegation thing that's going on right now. The Democrats, their corruptness, their seediness, their plotting, all of that stuff starts way before they set the final trap. Now, let me give you an example. During the campaign, the Access Hollywood tape somehow mysteriously disappeared from, I think it was ABC, one of them major corporations who had this tape, somehow mysteriously allowed it to get out of their care and over to another station or a news outlet that released this publicly. Now, they knew that they couldn't get him just on that tape because on the tape, he never said that he would do this against people's will. He was stressing that when you're rich or when you're famous, people will let you do these things. Now, if we try to play like we're so naive to some of these realizations to what he was saying, then we're all deceiving ourselves. You know why? Because as a former football player myself and to have friends that played on the NFL level and also I've worked in some entertainment. I've seen some people who quote unquote have a high status. I've seen them get away with stuff. And the women weren't offended at the time. At least they didn't act like it. Most of the time they came right up to the people, laughed and joked and flirted. And the guy, you know, took advantage of that. And I've seen these things happen with my own eyes that I said to myself at the time, 
There's a high probability if I tried that, I would get slapped. Why isn't this guy getting slapped? Hmm. Now, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying there's a reality to that. So they knew they couldn't get him on that. But what they did is laid the trap. Once they got the tape, they said, okay, what's the next phase of our trap? Next phase is to get him to deny the things that he said on the tape. But then up ahead, we're going to bring out some people that quote unquote validates that that's not true. So now all of a sudden the debate's coming up. These women didn't come out before the debate. These women were secretly stashed away somewhere waiting for the goal light. The debate comes up. I was wondering why Anderson Cooper kept pushing one particular question. He kept saying, so you're saying that you never did the things that you said on this tape? President was going on talking about some other things. And Anderson kept going back to what, what are you saying that you never did the things that you said on this tape? He was setting the trap. He needed a confession that to the public, to the American public, that I never did that. Because guess who was waiting to come out on Monday? Six or seven women that they had already coached, prop, prompt, and had them ready to go. So when he said that, Anderson Cooper, for whatever reason, just moved on. Okay, thank you. All right, next question. Now I'm going, why does Anderson Cooper keep going back to that? Well, he was going back to it, ladies and gentlemen, because he knew that if I get this confession was coming out, the next day is going to be, he's lying because all the things he said that he didn't do, he did it to me. So out of nowhere, all of these women come out and they start saying, no, he did do all of those things. Now, once they lost, those women disappeared. Now, all of a sudden, that sexual assault is back in the mainstream and, and, and the Democrats appear to grow a moral uh, c uh, conscience. Now, all of a sudden, you see the laying of another trap taking place. So Weinstein and the crew gets busted. All right. Then it fills over into the political realm. Two of the Democrats get busted and they start seeing an opportunity. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Right now, this is a hot topic in society. Maybe during the election, the people weren't too receptive of it because they sensed our corruptness. But right now. Since everybody's attacking Weinstein and the crew, I'm sure that if we sacrifice two of our own in this hypersensitive, hypersensitive culture that we're in right now, we can push the whole sexual assault agenda again towards President Trump and also tied in with the Roy Moore thing. Oh, he's supporting Roy Moore because they're both accused of sexual assault. Therefore, he's promoting sexual assault. And if the Republicans don't denounce them and demand that they step down, then all the Republicans are supporting sexual assault. And so now you get the day or two before Roy Moore's election takes place. And all of these women somehow came out today and did a press conference about President Trump and all these accusations that took place. Now, where were they at for the last for the last year? During all this time, they were nowhere to be found. Now, all of a sudden, before Moore's election, they come back out. And then here's my other question. Who put this press conference together, huh? Who put this thing together, hey? Huh? The Dems, that's who. Huh? Who I trust, not them, that's who, okay? They put this whole thing together, man, okay? That's who put it together. If you find the person that coordinated this press conference with all of these ladies, you'll find the mole. You'll find the rat. And you best believe it's a nasty, dirty rat that leads all the way back. Rat droplets. Just follow the rat droppings and you'll find the Democratic Party behind it. You'll find the liberal media behind all the rat poop. Because I'm going to tell you, you can't tell me that one of these women since a year ago, for whatever reason, sitting in her apartment or her house. And she says, you know what? For some reason, I'm still emotional over President Trump maybe grabbing me or said something to me and I can't let it go. I can't. But not only am I feeling this way still after a whole year, but I haven't said anything since then, I'm going to somehow think in my head through osmosis or mental telepathy that all the other women 
that said the same thing during the election feels the same way right now at this moment in time. And then somehow I have these connections to pull together a press conference. Who's able to do that? Who would average person can say, you know what? I'm going to go down my phone book list and find all of these other women. And then I'm going to use my power and connections with whatever liberal media station is willing to give us the time to do a full-blown press conference. And I'm going to coordinate that right during the day before Roy Moore's election. I'm going to coordinate all of this. I'm going to put this all together and they're going to give me the platform to vomit all of this stuff out at the last second and also be able to drum up some more emotions about last year's campaign election and sexual assault. Since it's a hot topic right now, since we're starting to see we're getting results based on just accusations. Yeah, since right now it's safe for the Dems to go on the offense, you know, and attack the, the, the conservative party because we've cut ties. We've cut ties with all of our people who might have been in that category. They're gone. Yeah. But but now we can we can get everybody to now focus on Roy Moore and President Trump. And then if all of these other Republicans don't denounce them to, then we're going to throw them in the same boat and category as we're throwing Roy Moore and President Trump in. And it's all based off of accusations. So if you can't see the trap that set way before it's actually launched, then you're naive. That's what I, I mean, you cannot tell me that these women have that type of coordinating skills to put this press conference together at the nick of time, right before the election tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something don't smell right. So once again, we see that those funky Democrats and liberal media have been plotting something to try to undermine this election, to try to throw more mud on President Trump. Why can't they just let it go? See, when they do stuff like this, it it degrades and belittles women who have really suffered some serious sexual assault behavior. Because when you weaponize something like this and it comes out randomly out of nowhere and anybody who have some type of logic and reasoning can see what's driving it. It's not being driven by just, oh, all of a sudden I feel this way, so I'm going to tell my story. How is it that all of these women coordinate this together? Somebody's quarterbacking this whole arrangement, the whole thing. And when you see that type of stuff, you say, you know what? It's very hard for me to say I empathize. I, I, I believe what you're telling me. It's very hard for me to do that considering the timing, the coordination, and all of the other surrounding facts that just all point towards a big fat rap, a big fat setup, politicizing this. And the Democrats are so reckless because they're tampering with progress. They're tampering with a Democratic elected president. They're disregarding half of Americans' will by voting him in. And they're being so corrupt and seedy. Their hatred and determination to get the president out is so adamant that they are willing to undermine real issues like real racism, real sexism, real homophobia, real transphobia, all of the stuff that could be something that we need to look at and take seriously they dilute it so much that we look at it and go, another plot, another scheme, another tactic by the dirty, dirty Dems. Their new name is Dirty Dems. That's it, man. Dirty Dems. I'm going to make a song about it. The Dirty Dems in the house. Uh, uh. The Dirty Dems in the house. That's what they are. Dirty, dirty, dirty Dems. All right? So don't fall for it. See through it. Smell the rat. We all can smell it. Just every time they get on TV, they that's what they look like when they be talking on TV. Yes. It comes out every once in a while. See, the president's in the White House and he's such a mis I'm sorry. Did anybody see that? Yeah. That's how dirty they are. <sighs> Burns me up. Anyway, you've been listening to Kevin at Kevin's Corner. If you like this video, hit like, share the video, continue to support. Um, 
Also, if you want to donate to Kevin's Corner, feel free. There are links in the bottom. People have been donating and it has been blessing me. So I thank you very much. Let's keep this thing going and let us not fall for the garbage of the dirty, dirty Dems. Okay, that's what it is. It's garbage. I'm talking dumpster juice garbage. That's how bad it is. So God bless you. Take care. We'll see you next time in Kevin's Corner.